Hey guys, Envy here, and in this video, we're gonna do yet another photo effect. I already have them loaded, so I'm gonna go straight into Photoshop. If you don't have a photograph to follow along, you can download these directly from the photographer from the link below this video. Okay, my goal here is to make the moon appear as if it's in this world here, in this environment. So I, ideally, I want it to kind of come around and I'll zoom in here. I want it to be right around this edge, okay? So what I'm going to do right now is duplicate this layer. And I'm going to create a, uh, select the background layer also uh, again. I'm going to go down to fill and adjustment icon and create a solid color. And now I'm, I'm just going to use this so I can, when I mask this, it allow me to have better control and visual of when I'm masking out uh, the scene. So I'm going to go ahead and select the mask icon down here, and that's going to give me the mask. I'm going to select that. Tap the B key on your keyboard, select your brush. I'm going to right-click here and change the size of this. Okay, about 50. Hardness, I'm not sure yet. Let me zoom in here. Make sure your foreground is black. Okay, I want the hardness to be about 65 again, maybe. Let's see. Yeah, I'll say about 65. And go to my brush settings. I want to change. Well, it's at 10 now. Let's see here. Yeah, keep my settings my spacing at 10. And what I'm going to do is mask out pretty much everything here except that will leave us just this half right here, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and start doing that now. I'm going to select this edge here, and I'm going to start masking out uh, the, uh, the rest of the photo. And I will see you guys when I'm done. There we go. I'll call that good. Now that we have that masked out, we can, I'm going to keep this layer here for right now. And I'm going to call this masked, masked land, I guess. And what I want to do is make another folder. I'm going to name this moon. I'm going to tap the V key on our keyboard. Go up to this uh, tab here. I'm going to go ahead and click, hold, drag to this tab till it um, select, uh, moves to this tab here and release. Just like so. I'm going to tap. Hold control, tap the A key, and we go to the uh, alignment options here and just kind of center it in the document. I'm going to go ahead and call this moon. I'm going to right click on that, convert to smart object. Hold control, tap the T key. We're going to rotate this with the transform option here just to where we can get it about where we want it. What also I might do is change the blend opacity here so I can see what's going on. Just have it to about something like that right there, I believe. Might scale it down just a tad. Zoom in here and kind of get an idea of how I want it. Something like that right there, I believe, will work. I'm going to go ahead and confirm that. Zoom in here one more time. Just want to get a good idea if it's what I want or not. So we'll experiment to see. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on the moon. It'll look a little weird here because we have it uh, rotated. We rotate it in, in, the, uh, in this world, but not out in its own document, okay? So what I want to do, close out this one for, so we don't get confused here, is I'm going to go ahead and just tap the W key on the keyboard. This gives us a magic wand tool. And I'm just going to click on the dark area, the black area here. And just want to see if I want to be a uh, perfectionist about this or not. Let's just experiment, see if we can't get this to work. This doesn't always work. I usually don't like using this tool here because it's usually not very friendly always. Just because if it gets into the black area to where there's nothing for it to grab onto because there's no contrast, it just 
selects everything out, everything, uh, the rest of the document, and I don't want that. So try that right there. See how that does. And by the way, all I was doing is selecting the quick selection tool right there. But I'm gonna go back to my wand tool. Zoom in a little bit. And I'm gonna tap the L key on the keyboard, lasso tool. I'm gonna kind of fill that in a little bit. I'm not gonna be perfect about this again. I just we're basically focusing on this part anyway. Just wanna check it out though. And go back to my hand tool. And what I want to do is click on this mask icon right here. And that kind of masks out the moon right here. And I want to select this mask, go up to the properties tab, and I want to blur that out. Pretty good deal. Yeah, about 35, and we'll see how that does. And if we want to change it or need to change it, we can come back in here. So now that we have this mask, let's go ahead and click this X and say yes. And now you can see it kind of masked, uh, kind of blending in here. Um, but as you can tell, I still want to go a little bit more. Uh, I think we need to go down some more. I'm going to bring it down out there. I'm going to scale this up again, like so. I need it to just start, you know, going out uh, the uh, edge right here. We'll see how that does. And I'm going to double click on that again. Play with the blur, uh, the feathering again. A little bit more. Right about 20. The X, confirm that. We'll keep it there for now. Because all we're going to, what I'm going to do, I'm going to select the mask, hold the Alt key, click hold, drag to the moon. And don't worry about that. It's just, uh, we're going to need to inverse the selection. So control and I. Let's zoom in here a little bit more. See how well we did with the mask. Not too bad. I mean, it works. Not too bad. Now, what I don't like is this part here. Reason being is because when we feathered it, it created a pretty big uh, edge up there. And I don't really like that. So I'm going to have it smaller. I just want to experiment here and see if that helps a little better again we can fine tune it later right now I'm not too worried about it and so that's our moon in somewhat in the scene here I mean it's not believable obviously but it's going to be more of a fantasyful type of effect anyway um, so what I want to do right now is I'm going to activate this layer just briefly I want to inverse that selection for right now. Um, and go back to the moon tab here. Actually, I'm going to create another folder and call it Gradient Map. We go into the Fill and Adjustment icon, select Gradient Map. And we can change the color to that. Let's select a, say a blue of some sort really dark blue not sure exactly how I want it yet we're going to click somewhere over here and add another color I'm going to bring this one up to about right here super bright I know and I'm going to move that over to about say 35 and this color here I'm just going to copy that color selecting over there and we'll bring this up about right there gives us a real spacey look click OK not too bad I think it should be darker what I'm gonna do I'll move that to about 30 to try something with that feel maybe might move this up oops I move that one or create another one. Nah, I'm not going to do that. Let me undo that. I apologize. Select this again. I'm going to say about 20 for right now. Change the color. Come around there. Something like that. There 
There we go. Now I want to move this up. I like that there. Click OK. Trying to get a good contrast, a good uh, feel to this. Might have that too light here. Something like that. That'll work for right now. We can always uh, shade this and fix this later. So right now we have our color, our gradient map here. We can always move that under and that'll expose the moon and leave it by itself. But what I'm going to do is select the moon, select blend mode, select screen. Okay. Kind of creates a real uh, transparent look. And what I want to do is play around with the brush here. see if this can't do some magic for us because I don't like you can see the hill through there so I want to um trying to think of how I want to do this I'm gonna go ahead and go to my brush tool and I'm probably just gonna start painting a little bit like this right here just ever so slightly make sure your foreground's white I'm just gonna paint here a little bit kind of see what I'm it's what I'm feeling or not oops and mask some of that away. Another thing we do is have our brush very large, change our opacity to about uh, a 40. Kind of come in here and do a little bit more masking. Something like that. Go back to 100. Make sure our background is flipped to black or foreground, sorry. Just like so. Something like that. It's interesting. Again, trial and error. Just takes practice. Just playing around and try to get it like you like, like you want. Um, so the moon itself, I don't know if it's just that edge or what it is. But uh, I want it to be a little bit more prominent. So let me try something here. Oops, not what I wanted to do. Or that. <laughs> I think it's just because it's blended in with the uh, environment itself. Trying to get an idea. But I do like it at screen. I think it's cool looking. So I think I'll leave it like that for right now. But I want to experiment a little bit more with this area here. So I might duplicate. Create another layer here. I'm going to go to Fill Adjustment icon. Select another dark color. And delete that. Alt click. And um, copy that onto this layer here. Hit deselect that. Control I to inverse the selection. To invert the selection, the mask. And let's just play around here. Select some kind of color. Let's just play around with the blending here and see if we can't find something we like um, or not. Kind of like that. I don't know if I want to do this or not. I like color burn, but I tell you what, let's try something else. I'm going to go down to the channels here and I'm going to. Control click, so hold control key and click on that blue. Inverse to selection, control shift and I on your keyboard. Then the fill adjustment icon, go to dark again. Trying to create an interesting uh, effect here, but I don't know. Don't know yet. I may just play around with the color uh, opacity here, the changes to see what I like, if I like any of them. I do like the blue though. I'm going to go with the blue of some sort like this right here. I really like it. It looks really cool. So, may go with something like that. I'll move this down. I just want to see something here. Yeah. I'll move it into the gradient uh, folder here. Bring that back up. Oops. 
bringing this back up. Just like so. Let me do something real quick here. Yeah. Now what I want to do, <clears throat> sorry, it took time, but you know, hard not to experiment with that. Now what I want to do, I'm gonna delete this here. Just double click or click on that control and click on the mask. I'm gonna go ahead and select the black fill adjustment and solid color again. I'm gonna control hold control key, click on that one more time. Go to the uh, tap the M key on your keyboard. That gives the marquee tool, and I'm gonna tap the down arrow key on my keyboard a couple times. I like that, and that kind of nudges it down. It's gonna what I want to do is leave a little bit of this strip of this black color. And I'm going to hold control, tap the backspace key, and that's going to wipe out, uh, remove the rest of the mask. Control D to deselect. And what I want to try to do, if it works, I don't know, is feather that out a little bit. Zoom out here. A little bit more, maybe. Something like that. I'm going to add some depth there. And we could also go, and I'm going to mask some of this away by taking the brush tool, flipping the mask, making sure the black's in the foreground. And I'm just going to mask this out away, just like so. Some of that on the edge here, just a little bit, just like so. Just a little, not much. We'll see how that looks. It's very subtle, but it still some detail there. And I'm gonna um, hold Control and Alt. I'm sorry, Shift and Alt. Click on that folder. I'm gonna name this shading, just like so. I'm gonna move that up a little bit. Again, just playing around with it, trying to get an idea if I want this or not. Let's go ahead and move that up and see. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the V key, uh, move tool, holding the control key and just nudging it up with my arrow key, my up arrow key on my keyboard a couple times. Just like so. Okay. And I'm just gonna keep that where it is, I believe. Just like so. And it works, it, it does what it's supposed to do. Now what I want to do, hold Control, Alt, Shift, tap the N key, and then the E key. I'm going to merge our layers together. And I'm going to right-click on that, convert to Smart Object. So what I want to do is go to Filter, Camera Raw. I want to add some noise to this. At least that's my goal. Zoom in here a little bit. Oops, I did that before. It seemed like I'm good at doing that. <laughs> Just like so. I'm going to go to the LFX icon. I'm going to add the grain here. Going into the presets, selecting grain, we can choose between these here. I like medium, but what I'm going to do is edit that a little bit and say mount, change it a little bit. Just a little bit. Try to get a good zoom in here, and that's going to help out with, oops, with the edges as well. So, like certain areas, this will help um, cover some of that up. I'm going to say about 25, I think. I think that looks pretty good. We can always come in here and change it again later. Size 38. Let's try, say, about 45. Roughness, 39. I'm going to change that to about 40. I'm going to click OK. Now we have our grain here, our noise. I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to ties it in. I'm going to name this grain. Put that in a folder as well. Just like so. And I think that looks pretty good. It's not bad at all compared to what we started with, which is this, and ended up like that. 
So yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things we could do. Can experiment with the smart sharpen again. We want to do that. It doesn't do too. It's not too bad. I'm gonna go ahead and keep that and see what that. Uh, that's what I want to do. We can tone that down by expanding that by clicking on that arrow, selecting smart sharpen, selecting this little slider icon right here. Double click on that, and we can change the opacity where it's not quite as harsh. About 45 works. Click OK. Now we'll update. I'll name this, rename this film grain, just like so. I'm just going to copy that and paste it into there. There we go. I think that looks pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead and save what I have. Photo effect four. Click save and OK. Save it as an image as well, JPEG, and OK. Now, I think that looks pretty good. I mean, not too bad. Wasn't too focused on, you know, trying to be too much of a perfectionist. And I, I don't think that turned out too bad at all. I really don't. There's other things we could have done, but, you know, I could be saying that for an hour. So, but I'm going to go ahead and end it here and wrap things up. And until next time, I will see you in another video.